So we're going to have this object start from zero. It's going to accelerate one meters per second. Show the vector so you can watch the arrow. So there's the acceleration vector green. It's going to stay the same size. Watch the red arrow for velocity as it plays. Starts really slow, gets faster and faster and faster. Stop it there. So the acceleration is constant. It's just a horizontal line on the acceleration time. We don't want that one. Get that one away. We're going to spend most of our analysis on velocity, time, and then a little bit we'll look at position time. First thing you might notice is position time. Is it linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear. Non that is not a straight line. That is nonlinear, exactly. And in fact, any guesses on the type of mathematical function? You'll see in a minute then. Okay. No guesses. That's all right. So your velocity time graph is a straight line. For a constant acceleration, you have a straight line or a linear line on velocity and time. I started at with a velocity of zero, ended up with a velocity a little over five, okay, almost or four and a half meters per second. Right? Okay. So position time nonlinear, velocity time linear. That's not quite as interesting, so I'm gonna clear that. We'll do it again. Make the starting position just negative five to give this person more distance to move. Starting velocity six, acceleration negative two. So at time zero, so when we start the analysis for this, this object is moving six meters per second, positive direction. Acceleration, trying to take away some of that velocity. It's going to negative. Okay. So watch again, the acceleration arrow will never change its vector, but velocity will change. Let's go. And back the other way. Stop it there. Okay. So acceleration time we're not looking at. So just zooming into the position time graph a little bit, what kind of function does that look like? Parabola. Parabolic, exactly. So acceleration follows, acceleration time follows a parabolic function that you're learning out in your math right now. It's a, it's a negative acceleration in this example, so it's opening downward. So if we did that whole vertex form stuff that you're doing down the hallway, you would have a negative number out in front of those brackets with the X. If we have a positive acceleration, you'd have a nice little happy face, right? Shape, acceleration. But for now, we'll stick to this one. Zoom into the... Oh, still on a racer. There we go. Okay. So velocity, time, position, time. Just really quickly, um, we're not going to focus much on position, but uh, at the top of that parabola, the top of that peak, what does it? What's special about that? What's happening at that point? When this object, let's play it. Let's play it back so you can watch it. Watch when it gets to the top of the peak. What's happening to this person? Yeah, come to a stop for an instant turn around and starts going the other way. Okay. What does that point correspond to in the velocity time graph? So I'll see if I, yeah, see if I can stop it on the, so the direction has changed and the velocity has instantly become zero for every time we do kind of review. I talk about think cases where an object is accelerating, but the velocity for an instant can be zero. And this is how we visually can see that the acceleration arrow, it's green arrow never disappeared. It was always there. Okay, the acceleration never stops acting on this person, but they come to a stop for an instant and go the other way. Okay. So the point where the direction changes corresponds to the velocity time graph where the zero line is. So when the velocity goes from positive to negative, or if I put another number in here and get it to go from negative to positive, the direction changed. That's kind of the key thing. And we can also do some calculations on uh, position and distance traveled from velocity and time. That's what we're going to be looking at in more detail in just a minute. But a quick summary, and you might have done this last year in grade 10. If I take the area of that triangle right there, that will correspond to the value at the top of the uh, position time graph. If I can get this back. So this position time graph, its top value, what is that? 
it's about four, 3.993. So if I did the area of this triangle, let's see a uh, height of what did I start with the starting velocity was six. The base here looks like three, six times three, 18, nine, and a, almost. Let's see if I do that right. Six times two, three. Oh yeah, two times three, six. Close enough. I don't think that would work right. Oh, I, my mistake. The problem is the distance traveled, it worked, but I didn't start at position zero. Okay. I started at negative five, just so this object, this person had more room to move. So if I had started from down here where it's negative three and then all the way up to positive three or positive four, sorry. So that's where we're getting eight. Let's see, one, two, three. That's a, I don't even know if that's negative three, negative four. Eight, six times three, 18 divided by two, nine, that nah, close it up. It works. It's not a very good example because the numbers aren't very neat, but I'll show you another one here in a minute. So long story short, we can, we can gather position time and velocity time data from just looking at velocity and time's graph. All right. Stop that.